Mind Gap Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Mind Gap. I'm Doug. And I'm Justin. And Doug, would you rather have ghosts or roaches in your house? This depends. Because what kind of ghosts are we talking about here? Are we talking about like, we talking about poltergeist? You know, where you got fucking ghosts inhabiting clown dolls and trying to strangle your kids under their bed. You know, fucking... You know, all sorts of wild shit happening, you know? Because um, yeah. yeah. if there's that, I'll take roaches over that any day of the week. Because you know what? Roaches can be exterminated. You know what? I, I make one call. They come by. They fucking take care of the roaches. Is it going to cost me a little bit? Sure. Um, you got a ghost <laughs> that's wrecking your life, wrecking your sanity. Sorry, there are no Ghostbusters. Sorry to break it to you, but that ain't, that ain't, that ain't the real deal. So... Hey, you got a ghost that's wrecking your sanity. Too bad. Ain't no Ghostbusters. Mm -mm. End of commercial. Not going to happen. So, uh, but if it's just like, we talk about, you know, a ghost that just gets- Like Casper the Friendly Ghost? Or just like a ghost you don't even see, just in the middle of of my production, I just see the light flicker. I'm like, Hank, knock it off. All right? Quit. You know, it's like, if you want, we can talk later. All right? Just not right now, you know? (laughs) A ghost that you have really good conversations with. Yeah. like a, a That'd good, be nice. Yeah, right? Someone to talk to. In which case, I would <clears> take <throat> that over roaches. So, you know. So this, so for you, this question comes with a caveat. Yes. There's no clear, there's no clear, what if it is I'm probably, because well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, I don't believe in ghosts. So then I guess I'll what, go with ghosts because I don't think they're What kind real. of roaches? Yeah, that's the other thing too. We're talking about like those it, big hissing, hissing motherfuckers. You know, the that's ones what I'm that saying, right? Like, you? yeah. Are they gigantic fucking roaches or like the little teeny ones? Yeah. And is it like two roaches or like a whole colony of roaches? Well, well listen, there's no such thing house. as just two roaches. I mean, well, you know. I'm just saying. If we're caveating like we got, ghosts. We, we had uh, one termite trouble in our house. We just had one <laughs> annoying little termite, you know. Uh, just, we had termite. Oh, you guys got termites? No, no, no. We had, we had termite. One. Yeah. It's like we had yeah. one mouse that was running around this place. Just one. It's really hard to find them. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know? Um, I, you know, yeah. What do you think? God, here's the thing. I so here's the worst part of each. Roaches, I, just fucking gross, right? Like you open up a cabinet, mm-hmm. and like oh, ten roaches fall out. Like that would just skeeve me out. But at the same time, I don't feel like I could take a shit because I'd be like, is this ghost watching me? Like it would just make me. It would just be weird to think that this ghost is watching me all the time. You get, I assume it's a pervy ghost. You get. You wouldn't be able to... Wait, would you get pee shy around it? I would get everything shy. That's what I'm really? saying. Like, it would just be hard to do anything because I'm like, ah, stop watching me. Oh, I would just I don't be know like, if you're man, hanging out. If I'm like, you know, masturbating or something, I'm like, yeah, Hank, are you watching? Because you should. Get in here, Hank. It's about to happen. Possess Hank! me. You know? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me so I can finish. You know, like just... <laughs> Hank. Now's your cue. Get inside me. Yeah. I, yeah. I would try to be as I, annoying as I could to the ghost. You know? To the ghost? I guess I guess the big thing is, is it a murdery ghost or is it a just a like a spirit that hasn't moved on kind of, you know, ghost? Is it a normal ghost or is it a murdery ghost? Is that it a normal be, ghost? You act like ghosts are just hanging out all the time. I'm just saying, is if you're going to say there can be murdery ghosts, then there's normal ghosts in this world of this question. Yeah. Yeah, what, what powers do they have? We talking like Ghost from the movie Ghost, starring is Patrick Swayze. Is it like Swayze? Slimer? Yeah, is it like Slimer? Where it's you know? just gonna leave like shit all over my house? Because if that's the case, yeah, it may be roaches. I'm taking roaches because again, you can get rid of roaches. You know, right? If we're just talking yeah. about, you know, there's so many different variations. My favorite thing is when Natalie will ask me about these things. You know, she'll ask me like about she'll the pose rules. a question like this too. A rules? I was like, it depends on the mythology we're talking about. She's like, what do you mean? I go, listen, people have all sorts of different rules based on different stories that you read. Like she asked about vampires or werewolves. I'm like, sure. Depends on the movie or the book that you read because right. they're their weaknesses and strengths. They are long. 
So get right. Depends here's the, on how here's you your it. general kind of base, but mm-hmm. man, Natalie, there are variants. And I love her. Boy, She's so there. goddamn curious. She oftentimes will come in while I'm playing game and she'll just ask me like different things. The, the most frustrating one was I was playing a tower defense game and she was like, dad, what, why are these monsters trying to, to attack your tower? And I was like, because that's what the game is. She's like, yeah, but why are they trying to destroy your tower? I'm like, Natalie, this is a tower defense game. The objective of the game is the computer sends monsters. They try to attack my tower. I don't know no their motivation. They come out of the portals. Well, why they come out of the portals? Don't know. That's just how this works. I wasn't given the backstory on this. I just know that I have to kill them. I get money for killing them, and then I build more towers and prevent to try and prevent them from coming to my tower and knocking it down. And she just has to know all the details. I'm just like. See, it seems to me that that's not a typical answer for you. I would expect you to absolutely launch into a yes and and give her some sort of at like, well, here's what, let me tell you about what happened to these monsters prior to my castle being built and just launch into When I'm in the middle of her. playing, not interested in making up shit. I'm focused. <laughs> I'm focused on stuff. And I'm like, but then she's also very helpful. Like I've been, I don't know if you're familiar with the game Helldivers 2. It's all the rage right now. It's quite an awesome I've heard game. people speak of it. It's a cool game. Uh, it's basically like a good version of uh, Starship Troopers, um, where okay. you essentially uh, come from Super Earth, and the the game literally starts with a propaganda film about okay. why you should become a hell diver and spread democracy. And your tutorial is just the. It's like it shows you how to play the game, but you realize that like within the mythos of this world, like you are being so poorly trained to go out and do stuff. And they just like, you basically show up and you do missions. And when your character dies, that character's dead. And then okay. they drop pot in like another. And the idea is that like, you're not an individual. You are just like all these different people that are coming in to spread democracy on these plants full of bugs and terminators. Okay. And your voice changes. Like you may be like oh, a man that's being like, yeah, take that for democracy. And then all of a sudden next, next, when you die and come back and you, you get drop potted back in, uh, you may sound like a woman's because the point is you are just <laughs> one of millions, if not billions of humans that are being propagandized into joining the hell divers to be heroes. And you're just getting shot into the shit to fight these wild ass stuff. Very much like edge of tomorrow. Just yes. like, Hey, we're grabbing everyone and good luck to you. Yeah. And there's, so, it's like the tips are you full of propaganda. Matter. It's yeah. so funny. It's like if you've heard that by uh, failing a mission that you'll end up in a re-education camp, those are just lies. Like, <laughs> it's like you know. I love uh, this. This is this reports that say the stims that heal you are addictive are completely false. Use them as much as you want. Like just. <laughs> <laughs> It's like at first, if you don't succeed, <laughs> dive, dive again and again and again and again and again and again. Like it's it's a it's a fantastic game. It's really really cool. cool. And is it? Can, it's it's insanity though, right? Because it's I've it's, heard there was I saw this meme of uh, there was that one time Trump just started talking gibberish and it said like me trying to <laughs> me that. trying to explain me trying to explain hell divers to my buddies and it's like. <laughs> And then the missiles, and then pew, yeah, exactly. that's pretty good. honestly pretty good description of the game because also lots of friendly fire in this game. You will absolutely <laughs> blow each other up because you can okay. call in orbital strikes. You can call it so like fucking giant laser beams will be shooting down from the sky. Uh, you call you them can like cast fireball. There's basically napalm that you yeah. can drop. And if people are not aware of what you're doing, because if you're playing with randoms, people don't communicate. They just drop Mm-mm. shit. So before you know it, <gasps> like the whole place explodes. And you're like, okay, well, great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah. There's so much friendly fire. Um, it's, it, there's actually a, a tooltip of that says, hey, just remember, friendly fire isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to write for the tool to like, yeah. <laughs> what I must have had a blast on that. That's a, yeah. that sounds really fun. I would say, Hey, is it available? Crop play? But I'm tired of being disappointed. So yeah, I don't think that would yeah. run well on the Mac, but what's cool about it too. Oh, is, you don't think um, so? No. What's cool about it too is um, 
it's it's designed to play with multiplayer. I first fired it up and I played by myself. I'm like, this game's fucking insanely hard. Like, I couldn't finish the missions. It's like, you're not supposed yeah. to play it by yourself, dummy. You're supposed to play it with other people. With and I was like, oh, fine. People. I'll play with other people. I'm like, oh, this is much better. Um, well, but what's cool is, like, they give you objectives. And in, in real time, like, there's planets that are being invaded by the monsters. And mm-hmm. you have to, like... The more you spend on a on a planet, you can achieve liberation of that planet. Uh, and if you ignore it, then they can get taken over by the enemy, which is really really cool. So interesting. Okay. It's, so there's like actual, you know, you go to different planets, and there's a bunch of different planets to plan. They give you stats of how many hell divers have died in action on that planet, how many shots have been fired. Like, yeah. it's insane. It's it's a very fun and cool game. I'm hoping to play that maybe for this week's uh, video game stream. Oh. That'd be a blast. I mean, if you get that crew together, that'd be an absolute blast. Yeah. What was there was a game uh, came out a while. I I feel like we talked about it, but it was a game that it was cross platform in the sense that like PC could play with mm. console. You were you could airstrike like one one game you could be in the air and one game you could be on the ground and you had to communicate to each other and it was like it was. Do you remember dust, what I'm talking about? It was it was connected with Eve. It was Duff, Dust Dust okay. Four Fourteen or something like that. So it was connected with with Eve. Yeah. The Got idea, because okay. in Eve, which is a space, you know, sci-fi game, you spend all the time in space, but you can colonize planets for yourself and then extract the resources. And uh, the company, the software company, create a, a like a sister game to it, which it was a first-person shooter, where you could right. hire mercenaries to go mm-hmm. down on the planet and take over different aspects from another player, and those players would be paid the currency from uh, from Eve to basically outfit their guys and get better. It was it was a really interesting, I don't think it's still going, but it was a really cool idea to be like, hey, these things are connected and there's two different gameplay styles. It's very interesting. Those are the kind of like that and held out, like any any game that like pushes how games are played or yeah. just the, the concept of what, it, like I always find those the most interesting style of games. I, Helldivers really cool 2 is another play. game I wish we could play together because uh, not only is it like challenging in a, in a good way, mm-hmm. um, it's at, it's, it's, you fight against two different groups. There's like just space bugs and the other mm-hmm. one are basically terminators. And it is fucking intense at times because they just start pouring like bugs will just start bursting out of the ground, attacking you. And you're like, Oh my God. And you're just like, and you just, and the thing is you, you have a certain amount of ammo. Then you got to call in supply drops to get more ammo. And yeah. you got to be very tactical with your loadouts. Like if, if someone like you can work together to be like, all right, what do you, cause I can call down sentry guns. They'll just start firing shit or again, yeah. napalm, carpet bomb. There's, you know, su- super weapons you can give yourself. If you get high enough level, you can call down like a fucking mech and get in the mech and just be like, that's, and that's those cool. things just light shit up, man. It's crazy. And the harder difficulties you do, they net you more currency and more experience, but obviously way more difficult enemies right. uh, as you go along. Mm-hmm. And there's, and the missions that are available, like you got to go destroy a Titan like fucking insect that's gigantic and you're like go kill that i'm like okay (laughs) you got it it feels very fun it feels very cool and it's it's very enjoyable so it's 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 a lot of fun so i'm looking forward to playing that uh hopefully with the crew this uh this coming friday which reminds me gang i host a video game stream on fridays sometimes saturdays like i did last time so keep your eyes peeled for that stuff um youtube.com slash mind gap podcast Uh, also check that out, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, uh, for all our good stuff. We've got all of our episodes are there, uh, full episodes released on Fridays, audios on Mondays on all podcast platforms. Uh, you can see clips from the show, shorts and all that good stuff. YouTube.com slash mind get podcast. If you have a question you think we should answer at the top of the show, head over to our discord link is in the description down below. Recently overhauled, a little more seen, you know, uh, seamless is the word I'm thinking. It looks good. A special shout out to Noah for helping me like uh, restructure that. It looks good. But you could just fire a question that you want us to start off with at the, at the start of the show. Head on in there and do that. And check links in the description for other things like our Patreon and our merch. Take care of business. Business has been taken T- care of. Business TCB. is served. Customers are happy. I rest my case, Your Honor. Now it's time to make the advertisers happy. That's right. Hey, you. What? Shut the fuck up and listen. Have you ever wanted more followers on the internet? Well, you can have them. My name is Trent Dickerson, and I've got loads of followers. Just go to my website, 
tdixloads.com and sign up for free and I will give you a personal consultation to see how many followers you need and when. When the time comes, all you have to do is pay a flat rate of $99 and I'll send over all the followers as discussed. That's tdixloads.com where followers come. So Doug, what I was going to say before we did the call outs is uh, I thought you'd appreciate this. Beth came home the other day from work and asked, she goes, Hey, she goes, have you ever heard of, uh, is it Warhammer 40? And I go, Oh shit. Warhammer 40 K. And I, she goes, yeah, that's it. I go, I have continue. You're <laughs> like, she goes, Beth, be very careful what you say to me next, because this could go <laughs> I, to a place you don't want to go and you can never come back from. I said, do not let Doug know you know about this. Okay. <laughs> He will talk your ear off. He's got a he's got a she, he's got a YouTube page where David Attenborough explains everything to you. You know <laughs> about Warhammer. Very 40K. long videos, very long, but super um, informative. But but wonderfully done. Mm-hmm. Um, no, she she goes. She was yeah. She was there's the. I was talking to one of my colleagues, and he had mentioned that how much he loves this, and he said he was getting a new tattoo, and I asked of what, and it was he said of this of this game that he loves. So she was. I was just wondering. He said it was real nerdy, and I was wondering if you knew about it. I go. I said I'll tell you what. So next time Doug and the family comes up, we have a new friend to introduce Doug to. <laughs> oh boy! I said Doug needs to meet this person. Well, here's the thing: for sure, I've played Warhammer 40k one time on the tabletop, but I am very familiar with the universe. I've played the computer games. And you things love like the that. lore, I'm yeah. Very excited for the uh, Henry Cavill, uh, you know, Warhammer 40k show that's coming out. Looking oh, yeah. forward to that. Uh, but yeah, if he's like, "What's your favorite army?" I'd be like, "Listen, man, like." <clears throat> Never actually really played it, but I do enjoy the universe. So here's I can, the thing: I can that's probably one of those, talk with it. You that's know? one of those things I feel like you could talk about at length, having yeah. played it one time, and you and you could probably fool someone. If we get into the nitty gritty of it all, like actual talking about armies and stuff like that, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do that with you. Uh, but yeah. I'll tell you what I like about the lore all day long and, and right. all that sort of stuff. But if you're getting to be like, you know, what I really like about my point system light loadout is um, the Adeptus Mechanicus. Is, I'm like, all right, I'm out. I can't do that. Like, I know what that is, <laughs> yeah. but I can't contribute to that conversation. So, uh, yeah. yeah that's well, regardless, cool. yeah. I found a new friend for you. And Jared sent me a video today of um, <laughs> a woman. She's like, I'm going to go mess with my husband real quick. And he's setting up a, a game of Warhammer with his buddy. And I'm going to go see if he'll let me play. And she's like, well, I'm saying, she goes, hey, what are you doing? He's like, oh, just setting stuff up. She's like, do you think, do you think I could play with you guys today? And he just looked up and he smiles and he's like, ha, 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 you don't, you don't want to do that. She goes, no, no, I, I really want to do it. And he's like, he's looking at her like, don't go down this road. Cause he's like, don't threaten me with a good time. He's like, right. she's like, like, can I, can I play with you? Like, is that allowed? He goes, listen. I'll make an exception and I'll, I'll get you into the game if you want to do it. She's like, really? He goes, yeah, yeah, I'll get you, I'll get you set in the customer going, God damn it. I thought he was going to tell me no. He's like, hey, if you're taking an interest hey. in this, he's like, I'm not going to tell you no, but just know right. what you're about to walk into is some shit, you know? <laughs> you're probably not going to like what we're about to do. Yeah, you're going to fucking lose your mind at all the rules <laughs> for this. So, yeah, have fun. Ah. Uh, Justin, uh, did you hear about the old man who found his old base in an attic? No. And I don't know. I don't know how I didn't hear about this. You seriously haven't heard about this. I, I thought, swear to God. I thought I for sure not, you would have heard about this. There's I this, thought so too. This guy apparently is like a hobbyist. Like he's just kind of like enjoys bases. And um, I guess like 50 years ago, he lost one and turns out it was just like in the attic of a, a, he was like over in the UK or something. It was like just in some fucking bar attic. And, uh, it was like a big deal in the news. And it was this guy, um, Paul McInerty, I think is his name. I think Um, we give that one more shot. Paul McInerty. It's close. It's very close. Oh, so you did hear about this. I well, I think uh, the the uh, local product, the Liverpudlian pronunciation is uh, McCartney. Oh, that's it, it's a the race it's a car driver, thing. right? Get back yeah. here. It's like very glottal in the back of yeah. the throat. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, he's a race car driver who plays bass in his spare time, and he fucking lost it. 
just left on the side of the road. Yeah. And then some guy just, he got, you know, he got drunk in a pub and just left it laying there. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's playing, you know, just do 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 do. And then he left it. And then uh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what a big deal. <laughs> and someone said some for some reason, someone just likes, you know, NASCAR so much that they're like, we should look into this and see if we can find this guy's base. This, this old man leaving this behind. And then they you're found killing it. this. You're, you're absolutely you're doing such a good job with this. Yeah. Uh, so it's apparently some big mystery that they just found out. And it's like, he just left it. Just left it in some pub. You know, that's that was it. So I thought you like you like NASCAR. I figured this would be a good good thing I, to talk about. I don't like NASCAR. I love NASCAR. First yeah. off. Yeah. Okay. Ride or die, baby. Number 44. All day. Dick trickle. Dick trickle. All the way. All baby. day. All Never stop day. stopping. You know what I mean? Never, that's it. <laughs> Always turn left. Oh, turn left. <laughs> Always turn left. That's what they say. That's what they say. It's, it's that's old wisdom from back in the old that's, NASCAR days. If you if you remember one thing, it's turn left. You know, turn left. Always turn left. You're in trouble. Right. <laughs> yeah, I heard this story and I was like, oh, Justin probably heard about this about uh, yeah, Paul McCartney. One hundred percent. First off, cannot fucking stand the layout of this page. This page. I don't know what page you're on? The one that you the sun. I didn't link anything to it. (laughs) Oh, it's not. Okay. Sorry. I found it myself. I was like, I didn't, because the whole point was for me to like, try and like softball this in there. Like, did you hear about this old man that lost his base? And you're like, what? (laughs) Well, yeah. And this is me. This is me going, well, I better look this up for Doug's. (laughs) And you wanted to trick me. I'm so sorry. (laughs) And and he's like, hey, this website sucks. I didn't pull it up. You did. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Doug, it's been a very yeah, I'm long sure the day sun for sucks. me. I apologize. It's not a good, yeah. it's not a good publication. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. This one's much more consolidated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So CBS you, you, News. Were I you familiar got, with this I should have gotten to this one. No, I, hand to God. I, I, I had not heard about this at all. This is brand new, brand new story for me. I thought I figured so, for someone as, as big of a Beatles fan as you'd be like, oh, yeah, the bass. They found the base. I'm surprised that I did not know about this for sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, I mean, have you pe- have you done? Have you read? I'm familiar. I'm can familiar you, with the story. I intentionally can you didn't give put me the li- story. I, I intentionally didn't put a link there because I didn't want you to look ahead at the time because I wanted to, I want to do to you <laughs> well, what you do to me about Blink One Eight Two. You piece of shit. Um, <laughs> well, look. In fairness, I feel like this bit has gone exactly how it should have gone. A hundred percent. I'm. I'm. I think I consider this a win. Uh, so apparently 50 years ago, um, Paul McCartney's bass got stolen. They had their trailer. They were playing a show and, uh, got broken into and his bass got stolen. And for 50 years, people have been wondering where the fuck is this bass? And apparently a couple of, uh, humble investigators thought they'd take up the task. They started sleuthing around and ultimately they were able to uncover, where this base was and apparently it was in the attic of a pub and in still in pretty good condition and uh mccartney i think was in touch with i forget the name of the 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 company the the base they, i can't remember but he has a particular uh, hoffner hoffner it's yeah. like he's always used those those bases and he'd like yeah. talk to his contact over there and you know i guess that guy was originally like man have you ever you know found this thing or whatever and paul's like no um and uh perfect he thank you um so they looked into it and they were able to verify with hoffner that like yeah this is it this is the base and this is the one yeah and he got he got it back and he was like tickled to death like holy shit this is it this is the thing it's been it was been missing and they found it and i was like this is big news for uh these beatles dorks out there they're like where did it go you know yeah i uh i again I'm ashamed. I'm absolutely ashamed that I never, I did not Mission realize this. This is the thing. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, it is. It's like, if you look at any of the, uh, any of the old pictures of the Beatles, like that, that's the bass that he's playing. Like you can, you, you'd know instantly when you saw it, you're like, oh yeah, that's the Paul bass. Like even non Beatles fans, if you've seen a picture of the Beatles, then you've seen this bass. It's that, yeah. that tied to Paul McCartney. So it's, Good, good on him. I say uh, for finding it, like and making making Paul happy. You know what? At the end of the day, you made a you made a a, a pleasant eighty one year old man happy. Yeah, and I gotta how, say, how nice is that? 
for the people who stole it, um, shit job. Shit job. Shit. Of, of, because here's what I'll say. What did you end up doing with it? Nothing. You didn't sell right. it. Right. You didn't you didn't do you didn't like be like this is Paul. Maybe they didn't know who they were stealing from or whatever, but they just fucking stole a base and then they shoved it up in an attic and left it there. Like Yeah. That's just bad. About it, presumably. That's bad thieving, as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> the whole point is you're gonna steal something with the intent to I'm assuming sell it, sell it? show it off, do something right? with it. Yeah. It's Hold just it collect its dust like, for up on a, in a fucking attic. Like yeah. terrible job. You know, like send send one of the tuning pegs to Paul McCartney and go, unless you pay us one million pounds, we're going to send you piece by piece this base. And Paul's like, OK, cool. I'll just wait and then I'll put it back together. Right. And they're like, I didn't think about that. No one Shit. said these guys were smart. You know, no, we're well, going to send they- you the string one at a time. He's like, oh, no, I'll have to restring my base. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate, but I'll take it. Yeah. He's like, oh, no. Would you take <laughs> Each each thing they send him, they're like, it's worth less. He's like, it's worth less now, just so you know. Like, <laughs> just so you know, you guys are. That's his negotiation tactic to talk him down until he gets in and he just reassembles it. And he's like, you fucking idiots. <laughs> Thanks for me, base. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fucking wild, though. Yeah, I had no idea. Um, yeah. I thought that cool. would be interesting. I heard that. And I immediately thought of you. I was like, this has got to be like. Thank you. Long standing Beatles lore that Justin's just been dying to hear all about. And he's like, I didn't fucking know. What? I'm like. <laughs> No, old man. Well, here's the thing, because you didn't link anything like you said. So when I first read this, I read old man found his old bass in an attic. And I'm like, is this like a dude that like smelled fish for years and then realized he'd put fish in his attic? Like, oh, I'm shit, like, I, I don't forgot know about that. That bass up there. <laughs> I thought my house just stunk. And for 50 years, <laughs> I've smelled you know what? fish. You just kind of get used to it after a while. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. After a while. Look, I can't eat fish, but God damn it. I don't smell it no more. It was actually one of those like, you know, singing bay, you know, fish. That's what it's he Billy, was. He's like, I Billy found you. And it's like, <laughs> you know, as he turns it on and the battery's dead, he's like, I found you. I oh, missed Billy. you so much. <laughs> when did he God, get do you, you remember the commercials batteries? for that fucking thing? Fuck yeah, I do. Oh God. It was just like, yeah. check out the singing fish. And I was like, huh. Yep. Interesting. It was all those then, like quick. Quick pans to the thing as it as it came forward. It's like, yeah, bruh, 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 bruh. it's one of those things where you're like, oh, that's Take interesting. Me and, to the river, and then when you see someone that owns it, you're like, Ooh. well, my grandfather had one. We got yeah. it for him as a gag gift for Christmas one year, and it was yeah. I was like, all right, yeah. so that's gonna go in his trailer, and we'll have to deal with that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, we're gonna have to take that out and do something with yeah. it. You know, <laughs> yeah. I just remember the commercials, like, God damn, it's a classic classic mm-hmm. commercial speaking of classic stuff justin oh, uh huh. scientists are apparently one step closer to resurrecting the woolly mammoth what's up with that man well i think that they're so concerned with if they could they fail to stop and ask the question if they should yeah um because this i don't is think interesting. this is necessary yeah this is really interesting because there's very uh strong opinions on uh why they're doing this and, uh, you know, one of the common arguments is like, hey, there's a lot of endangered species that need our help that are alive. Why the fuck are you trying to resurrect something that's dead? Like, what's up with that? Right. Also, yeah, let's. We're, n- neither of us are experts in the field, but I have to assume Disagree. that introducing. <laughs> look, I'll speak for myself. Okay, I am not an you. expert in the field. Doug is, does a lot of independent study on his own. He's he's a very uh, he's a very smart man. Uh, spends a lot of time researching Warhammer 40k lore, but does not play God the game. Right. You know, time well spent. Uh, mm-hmm. I have to assume that reintroducing a a, comp- a brand new species of or a brand new uh, animal that has not been around for a very long time is not going to be the best thing you could do to our current ecosystem. I just I see potential issues arising top to bottom yeah i agree well i mean it's it's it is closely related to the elephant so in that regard look i get it do you justin <laughs> it's I feel closely like you related it's yeah. closely related but it's yeah. not the elephant doug yeah but it's, it's a hairy elephant is what it is if you really want to break it down scientifically that's what it is you know <laughs> is that straight out of the biology book yeah yeah. It's okay. Like, yeah. It's like well, uh, contiguous mammalis. Harry, I'm over two you know? tonight, Doug. I'm. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. 
we'll, we'll, we're going to bring you back around. It's all good, man. We, we got plenty of time. All right. We got plenty of time. Uh, <laughs> I love it. It's like technical possibility raises ethical concerns. What are you going to get out of this? As the professor of geosciences, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, uh, if you're going to release a herd in the Arctic tundra, is that herd going to be marching off to its second extinction in the face of global warming? <laughs> Just like, <laughs> <laughs> that's another question. Yeah. Is it going to be able to survive? Right. Well, we always talk about like, if you were able to go back in time, yeah. Right. Like you all, your whole argument is you, you would never be able to eat the food. Yeah. You would just, you would instantly right. just like, like die of sepsis. Yeah, the amount of, the amount of like yeah. diarrhea you would get from eating. Right. Cause that bacteria is different than the bacteria we we're, we're exposed to now. So it's like, yeah. So, uh, so let's look at know. like the, again, the, the climate and the, the whole ecosystem that we're reintroducing this ancient thing to. Yeah. So the long and short of it, uh, someone like the people that are looking to do this say that, um, they're excited um, because this is going to help benefit elephant conservation. And um, it supposedly uh, will also help fight global warming by restoring ecosystems in ways that could help reduce the amount of carbon being released in the atmosphere. Um, doesn't necessarily I'd like to hear more about that. Give more details. That sense. Um, but other people are like, there's so many species going extinct today. We're actually not going to be able to help any of them. If we're thinking about the woolly mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> so they're saying it's a distraction so all that being said i mean this just reeks of jurassic park in so many oh, ways absolutely um if we if you if you could resurrect any creature <sighs> man which one would you want to resurrect and then we'll follow that up with which one would be the worst one to bring back or we can well, start I'll with the worst if you want <laughs> well they bring up the dodo bird in here Mm-hmm. And I've heard a lot. I mean, for since I was a kid, I've heard people speak of the dodo bird, and I've always wondered what. I just, I've, I just like the name dodo bird. So I would say, what animal would I bring back? I feel like I would lean towards the dodo. Wow! Of all the things to bring back, you choose the dodo bird. You know You're what? Goddamn right, I would. Humble man, I'd bring back Jesus personally, um, because what people don't realize is that. Jesus is more of amphibian than he was mammal. And I think it'd be really cool to meet uh, the Jesus frog, you know? was So he was kind of like a lizard person. Yeah, right? Exactly. In that same vein. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? There you go. Um, I, uh, I think that's, first off, great choice. Thank you. Absolutely great um, choice. I can tell you what um, I would want to bring back. There's two of them. <laughs> which you would not want to bring back. What I would absolutely never want to see come back ever again. Okay. Uh, the megalodon? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. We don't need a megalodon rolling through the oceans. Also, that giant fucking alligator from Jurassic World. <laughs> Wait, so, um, sorry. You glitched right when you said that. I didn't hear what you, the animal was. The, the the giant fucking alligator from Jurassic World. Like, if you've seen those movies. <laughs> that thing, yes, yes, Or yes, I'm just yes. like, absolutely. Yeah. We don't need these giant abominations no roaming no. the oceans like absolutely not no no like those I, two those are two fantastic choices by the way yeah i would yeah. hate that i would never go in the ocean ever again if that were if those things existed i'd be like hard pass i won't do it like i don't know no yeah i you couldn't yeah i would never take another another i'd never go on a beach vacation i would never go on a boat uh be hard pressed to uh i'd be hard pressed to want to fly over the ocean because in my mind i'd be like what if what if they learn to jump no, <laughs> no, that's like if we land in the ocean, it's like, where's yeah. the gun that we have on board to just shoot ourselves in the head? Because I don't right. want to be here. I don't want to do this. Dear God, um, just the I, I remember taking Natalie to the Field Museum and they had like a megalodon exhibit and we stood in the jaws of a megalodon. And I was like, fuck, why did these that's, things exist? Like, that's wild that you guys got to do that. It's insane. Was, I'm it, just like, was it's, it just humbling as far as size goes? Oh, it was insane. It was insane. Yeah. We would be like, we eating a human would be like eating like a fucking uh, a nerd, you know, like a, like yeah. a little gumdrop, just um, like a Skittle to them. I'd be like, that also makes you wonder what the fuck were they eating? What other things were large enough for them to consume on a regular basis to, to, to be full? You know, there had to be bigger shit was, too, you know? Maybe it was those big alligators. I guess. I don't know, man. I'm just saying, but maybe. Probably fucking squids and shit like that that were 
octopi or whatever. Like, Jesus Christ. It's just, yeah. If those things existed, I mean, it's bad enough that sharks and, I mean, how this shit in the ocean, we don't even know. We don't even know exists. I mean, the giant squids do exist or the giant octopus, whatever. I don't know. They've seen proof of that shit. Like, that's terrifying. But the idea of that that thing is swimming around out there just makes to talk about existential dread like that's a world it's like well cool congratulations uh all shipping lanes are closed um you know <laughs> right you want to go oh, to man you want to do war at sea guess what there's good, there's an x factor there's right. an x factor now well doug talk about things uh you said like if there's some existential threat that uh brings us together maybe maybe <laughs> Maybe that would be the thing that we would all band together. We'd bring well, it back what. and then we'd be like, we need to kill it. Well, I tell you what, um, you know, nowadays if someone's like, oh, cool, I just dropped a Megalodon in there, that thing would be fucking dead. There's no way the thing would survive. Like the amount of just like sensory How much overload. Would we need to eat? Oh, well, oh, yeah. There's, with the sh- yes, 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 yes. I yes, mean, yes, Jesus yeah. Christ. And not only that, it's like, you know, it would get one over on a couple of things, but then people would be like, all right, <laughs> let's get our submarines out there. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> Let's take this thing down, you know. Although Armed God help me, I would not want to be in a submarine, you know. Because imagine it's like World War. They, dude, there's, there's, the, here's our movie. Here's our pitch, right? Like we always oh, have I'm these. Loving the, I, I love ready? where your head just went to. Yep. Yeah, it's like World War Two. Fucking Germans are out there in their U-boats. They're attacking the shipping lanes. They're nuking the British. You know, taking down those things, and then out of nowhere, something starts attacking. So the U-boats start going missing. They send out distress signals. They're like, what is it? What's it doing? What's happening? We've lost there? communication. Like, We've lost communication. And Hitler's like, we've got to find out what this is now. You know, and it's like, it's like, what did they, did the British invent some new thing? Is it the Americans? What is it? It's a megalodon. And it's just wrecking shit. It's just wrecking it all up. In the name of democracy. <laughs> it's the American Megalodon. That's the that's the movie. American Megalodon. Um, well, it's like what is it? Abraham Lincoln versus zombies. Like all those crossovers. Abraham yes. Lincoln Vampire Slayer. It's, uh, yes, it, all those different. Th- that's what this is. American Megalodon. American Megalodon. We train a Megalodon <laughs> to attack in the name of U.S. democracy. This has and to be the next just, Jason Statham movie. It, absolutely. The Meg. It's, it, the Meg Three. American Megalodon. Right, they train it. They like they find a way to communicate with it, and they get it on their side. Uh, and it, we change it. the course of human history because we <laughs> have the megalodon. But in a, tw- <laughs> in a twist of fate, we abuse our power, and the megalodon then turns on us. And we realize Ooh. once again that you can't control nature. It's like Jurassic Park, but yeah. way worse. <laughs> and it's it's also an allegory for capitalism. <laughs> That's right, because capitalism is bad. Because at the I, end of the day, we thought early stage capitalism was good, but then by the end of it, late stage capitalism, it eats us all. I uh, <laughs> I just looked up most most dangerous extinct animals, and there's a giant gorilla, oh. and also oh. I forgot the Tyrannosaurus. Like I feel like yeah. just that just run that run around on land. I mean, sure we got. The ocean, you can stay out of the ocean. If you yeah. resur- the worst things to do would be resurrect ones on land where we kind of have to stay. It's yeah. not like we can just like, okay, we're living in the ocean now. Yeah, you got raptors. It's like awesome. Packs of rap- raptors right. roaming around, just ripping us to shreds, you know? Yeah. Are the uh giantopithecus? Oh, is that like the giant ape? That's the giant the giant extinct ape. Which, dude, if this thing fucking came at me, there's a picture of a dude standing next to next to one, and yeah. the, the 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 man barely comes up to its armpit. Yeah, like that'd be fucking terrifying. Just giants just walking around. Yeah, obviously with the strength of the because I mean gorillas and shit like even chimpanzees could rip humans to shreds. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. So you add you add you know some extra some extra inches <laughs> some feet up, up to feet on up there six hundred and sixty pounds. Oh. I'm I'm trying to get a size on this thing, like a height, uh, description size. Here we go. Okay. Uh, About 12 foot tall. Oh, my God. uh, 600 pounds. And... uh, 12 feet, 600. That's pretty lean for a 12 foot tall creature. Like, that's... Yo, that's... Heavier than male gorilla. Well, look, it's all, uh, you know, his muscle. Um, Yeah. But yeah, they're also they're talking about their teeth and their jaws. Like this thing, dude, yeah this this would this would be a nightmare to to just because well, you also have to ask some yourself, sort of forest. 
or the woods. Well, if, yeah. if we were to resurrect them nowadays, I feel like we would have the firepower to put it back where we found it. Um, you know, yes, like. But That's I mean, you'd I'm have like, to go out. You'd have to go, you'd have to go out with that firepower in hand. Is the thing. What we have you helicopters. Could, I don't think you just. We have jets. Well, yeah, but like I'm talking like if you're just like you're like oh cool we're gonna go on a hike. <laughs> you're not bringing bear spray. You're not bringing stopping power with you. Exactly. No. I got I got bells on my shoes, so we'll let them know <laughs> when know. we're coming. So it knows yeah. where I am. So, so it knows come get where me. I am. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if this were Hell Divers um, 2, you'd come prepared to nuke that thing. That's for sure. I'll tell you that much. Goddamn right. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I don't think an AR-15, I mean, AR-15 will do some damage to that thing, but it, uh, <laughs> it's going to take some some hits before. Oof, boy. Yeah. I wonder how fast that would uh, be, too. Oh, dude. I wonder if it gives that. I don't know. Uh, Something that's two other- dugs tall just comes running at you out of the, <laughs> out of the fucking... Oh man! Out yes. of the brush, just bearing its oh, fangs, man. and you're like, ah! And you have nothing. You're fucking dead. You're dead. Fucking dead, bro. Speed MPH. Yeah, miles per hour. Fast. How fat? Doesn't say. Is um, the Apithecus. I mean, if it's as fast as a Doesn't fucking gorilla, say. I mean, I mean, gorillas well, are fast. Again, yeah. Let's say, yeah, let's say it's that fast, but then it's got height, so it can move twice the distance, right? Yeah, it's gait is nothing. Right. Yeah. So you're not outrunning this fucking thing. No. Like, you're not outmaneuvering no. it. Yeah, even if you see it coming and you start running, it's going to gain on you. Maybe it's a short distance kind of guy, you know? But if you're like, oh, no, and it ambushes you, you're fucking done. You're done. <laughs> Game over, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that'd be terrifying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'd say that bringing one, back most of these things would be a terrible idea. Um, it would be not a good idea, for sure. I, I'm curious because I, I will say, the curiosity inside of me is like, it's interesting that we would have that technology. I would like to find a very um, constructive way to put that to use. Um, resurrecting something that's long since gone, I don't know. I think Again, as, as, the, as, as a scientist, yes. I need to see more white papers that are going <clears> to describe to me the official use of this and, and its applications in uh, the layman society. You know what I mean? I'm thinking uh, all you dumb dubs out there. <laughs> I'm thinking it would be it'd be nice to to bring back uh, one of those uh, rhinos that uh, recently met its maker. Yeah, I feel or you know like what? I feel Can like we the bring Harambe a, back. Hmm? A cheap. Sh- just, oh, we just. Oh, now we're going. Not even. We're just going specific. Yeah. Can so we, you're not bring you're resurrecting back? at this play at this point. I just want to bring Harambe back. I feel like he deserves justice. You okay? So Doug's talk about necromancing. Yeah. Okay, I'm into this. <laughs> the way you what? said that necromancing sounds like a weird way of romancing. Oh, so you're talking about mm-hmm. necromancing, and I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, Doug, you know, <laughs> you want to get you want to get down with Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to necromance? You want Harambe? <laughs> you want to see how fast Harambe was? <laughs> I'll show you. I'll. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, ooh, ooh, not the sound you'll be making. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> uh, I don't have that available. And it's too long, so you know. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Bingo. That's it. <laughs> don't need to do the thirteen-second man screaming. That's fine. That's good. <laughs> I look. Uh, it, I, I will admit it is interesting that we're at a point where we're considering this, um, mm-hmm. and we're we're approaching a point where it's possible. Um, to bring back something that has been so long gone, I I don't see that benefit. I would say, why don't we focus on why don't we focus on more recently extinct things that that we can that we can bring back that might be better suited for the current environment that we're living in. I think we have to ask ourselves why. Right. Why, why, why? And we have 100%. to ask ourselves why five times and get down to the real root of this. Why are we doing this? Just because right. we can. Or right. is there a real reason to spend the time and resources to do this? If it's to be like, hey, we have this technology, so something really important is to go extinct, we can reintroduce it and re-engineer it so we bring it back in the system so that system doesn't collapse. Okay. If now we're, we're just talking like, about Hey, yeah. check it out. You guys want to see a, a, an even cooler alligator that used to exist? <laughs> Look what we can do now. Hold my beer. It was bipedal. <laughs> You know, which seems like, oh, it's not as fast. It's way more terrifying. 
<laughs> when that thing rears up and just starts coming at you, yeah, yeah no, thank it, you. Because it, it slams its its head on you, knocks you down, and then it bites you and twists you into oblivion. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also think that I I don't know, like we're 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 running out of uh, natural sp- or mowing those spaces down, so we're gonna bring back giant woolly mammoths and and yeah. put them where, right? You know, I don't know. I that will say again, not to belabor the point, but like the fact that it is at least connected genetically to elephants is something where I'm like, well, hopefully their diet is similar and we could like possibly reintroduce them into a, a way that at least it's connected with something else. Whereas, you know, as a scientist, you know, if you're going to bring back, you know, a megalodon, that's just irresponsible because like, what the fuck is that thing going to do, you know? But to that end, I, I would say like, have we done the, like, do we know like do the same fruits and, and whatever else that it ate are they still are they still as plentiful as they were when uh, they were around i don't know i mean we can we can they can get substitutes it's fine you know just make them a protein sour cream will give them greek non-fat yogurt they'll be fine they won't know the difference they won't know the difference they've been gone for a while okay they're a bunch of dummies they don't know right (laughs) they don't know you know what doing this just doesn't seem practical to me goddamn right it doesn't got the questions, we got the answers, all you do is ask. Practical, 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 ask practical, duh. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if we, <laughs> we okay. haven't been here in a minute, uh, but uh, this is one of our uh, old school favorite segments called Ask Practical Doug. And uh, Practical Doug is a tiny Doug that lives inside of Large Doug and helps guide Doug through all of life's journeys through the hard questions and helps Doug make the right decisions. And if you want to ask Practical Doug a question, you can on social media at MindGapPodcast, hashtag AskPracticalDoug, or pop on over to that Discord server we mentioned earlier. And there's a channel for Ask Practical. Is there still a channel for Ask Practical Doug? There is. Thanks for noticing. Okay, cool. We did not get rid of it. Uh, but yes, there's a channel for Ask Practical Doug, and you can ask them the question. And if it's a good one, we might even answer it on the podcast. But today, we go back to the Am I the Asshole well, and uh, we're trying to uh, answer the question here. Am I the asshole for calling out my nephew for claiming AI-generated art as his own in an effort to outshine his cousin? So the nephew claimed that AI-generated art was his own in an attempt to outshine the cousin. So the story involves two of my nephews who we'll call Greg, 16, and Bill, 17, who are not brothers. Bill has been taking- distinction. (laughs) Important. Bill has been taking uh, art classes lately and has put up a few of his works on our family's Facebook group, Gross. After a few family members replied with how proud they were of Bill, Greg posted some digital images of far, far higher quality that he claimed were his own. His tone was mocking of Bill as he had commented that he taught himself and didn't need school. Additionally, he had posted some rather harsh criticisms of Bill's art. A few of her older family members complimented Greg and were naturally blown away. But then I noticed a very few obvious signs of AI art generation, like weird hands, for example. So I called him out on it. I pointed out to the family that Greg had not made these, but instead they were created using a website. Greg was first defensive, but then took the images down without admitting guilt. I want to be clear that I only called Greg out because he was obviously trying to one-up Bill, who is putting legitimate effort into his work. Greg's mom reached out to me and said that she understood but wished I'd talk to her rather than posting out there for the family to see, because now Greg feels too ashamed to talk to the family. A boo-hoo. I can appreciate that, but my concern is that if Greg had merely taken the images down without any explanation, then there would remain the idea in people's heads that Greg was, unfairly, the superior artist in the family. Greg's father, on the other hand, says I'm an ass since he sees it as me bullying a kid a decade younger than me. Was I an asshole on this one? Practical Doug, what say you? No! No, you weren't. Um, it is decided. Well, because if, again, we always take this with a grain of salt that if everything we're reading here is true and accurate, um, mm-hmm. if Greg is creating digital art and using it as a way to publicly criticize and brag 
then what goes around comes around when it comes to publicly putting stuff out there. If you are going to criticize people's stuff, mm -hmm. if you're going to claim that you've done something, then you need to be also prepared to take public criticism all the same. So to put in there <clears> like, yeah, look, I did all the stuff and I didn't need to go to school for it. And look how good it is. It's like, yeah. um, okay, uh, well, you didn't make that. And then if he just takes it down and isn't afraid, because this is a good, actually, this is a really good lesson for Greg in that mm -hmm. yeah. um, you've got to be really careful with criticizing other people's shit and also claiming shit that isn't yours. Like if you're like, mm -hmm. look what I did. And people are like, mm, I don't think you did that. And then you just run away in shame. And you're like, I'm too embarrassed, too ashamed to talk to the family. Well, you're going to have to fucking get over that because mm -hmm. you did it. Come out. I know he's 16. Come out and be like, hey, I made these. They're not real. I didn't draw them. I AI generated these and whatever. And then deal with the consequences. But that, that's very much a 16-year-old solution, which is like, I'm going to quietly remove this and never right. speak of it again. Right. That's a Cochrane household classic uh, <laughs> tactic to do Was that. Was this your family? Yeah, right. Oh, duh. Uh, might as well have been. But, you know, it's just like it, the, Greg obviously wants attention. Bill's getting attention. Mm -hmm. He wants the same attention, but he can't draw. He's not putting in the effort mm -hmm. to learn how to do it. And so right. he's like, look what I can do. I mean, if you want to make an argument about AI generated art and whatever and yada, yada. But let's not let's not pretend that you made that art. You typed in a prompt to get the art. <laughs> That's not the same as drawing it. So I think one is very different than the other. So. I would say that the the poster here is not an asshole. Um, I don't think um, calling that part of me would be like, maybe you should have a private discussion. But no, if this if this kid's fucking being public with his criticism and 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 being open and you know, about that sort of stuff, then it, if he especially if he's gonna claim something that mm -hmm. he didn't really do, he should be called out on it. Because if he's looking yeah. for public adulation, then he should be prepared to receive the other side of that as well. Yeah. Well, and also if he, if he's dragging Bill. You know, and then he gets dragged and he's like, oh, poor me. Well, fucking suck it up, man. Like turnabout's fair, but that's what it is, you know? Yeah. It's not bullying to call someone out on their shit. No. Bullying would They're be just... like, Greg, you can't draw for shit. Right. Try harder. Oh, this is obviously Jesus. AI. What's the matter, Greg? You can't draw yourself, you big dipshit. Like that's bullying. That's to be bullying. like, hey, right. this is AI generated art. You didn't draw this. That's not bullying. That's called that, facts. That is stating a fact. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Those are called also, facts. Also, uh, you know, we all know that uh, the older generation uh, is not good at discerning what is true and what is not on the internet. So really, the poster was doing a service for everyone. He was helping Absolutely. his cousin Bill, his nephew Bill. He was teaching Greg a valuable lesson, and he was protecting the elderly is really what he was doing. I agree. I agree on all these things because, um, yeah, I understand being like protective of your kid, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I have to say if Natalie was doing this shit, I'd be the first one to be like, Hey, do you get called out on your shit? How'd it feel? How'd it feel? Don't do it. Again. Sucks. Yeah. How about you don't do that? Did you learn a lesson? What did we learn here? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I, now it, obviously if <laughs> the original poster continued to be a dick <laughs> after the fact, after everything was right. resolved, then we'd have some problems, but I'd be like, Hey, listen, um, hope you learned something. And honestly, I mean this with, with all sincerity, good lesson to learn. Because um, if you learn Absolutely. this at 16 and if this sticks with Greg mm -hmm. and he, he learns, he's like, shit, this was just with my family. This is a shit experience. <clears throat> if he does this in public right. to other people, boy, could the ramifications on that be very serious. So the internet lives he takes forever this and learns and learns from this because yeah. yikes, yowza in your trousers. Yowza in your trousers, not the asshole. That's right. It's You're done. Welcome. It is decided. Yes. Uh, good Justin. One. Yes, what Doug. Do, do you have to recommend for this? Oh, Jill will be very happy about this recommendation. I am recommending um, what absolutely deserved to be. It was in contention, but absolutely deserved to be right up there with every other film was American fiction. This film I watched twice in as many days and I got more out of it the second time I watched it, and I fully plan to watch it again. I am in love with this film, American Fiction by Cord Jefferson. First and foremost, first-time filmmaker. He's worked in the industry, but this is the first film he wrote and directed, and fucking knocked it out of the ballpark. 
absolutely knocked it out. And if you have not seen his acceptance speech at the Oscars, oh my God, thank God I was sitting down because my knees went weak as soon as I heard him speak. Uh, everything he said was just fucking brilliant. Uh, Jeffrey Wright, Sterling K. Brown, Issa Rae, uh, Leslie Uggams, um, uh, Erica Alexander. The the cast was phenomenal. Acting was great. Script was amazing. Um, it, it, it had subtext. It was funny. It was touching. It just, it hit all the fucking notes. I cannot recommend American fiction enough. It was such a pleasant watch. Um, I feel like this is the type of film, Beth and I were talking about it. This is the type of film that, that Drew and I have lamented the the uh it has gone the way of the dodo if you will yeah the the mid the mid budget mid tier film that just was the kind of one that you went and it sat with you for a little while it wasn't a giant blockbuster uh you know it wasn't a, a teeny little indie film it was right in the middle and it was the one that was character driven and story driven and you don't see those that often and the fact that this one was done so well and got the accolades that it got could not be happier so that that gives me hope for the cinematic future Go watch American fiction. That's awesome. Doug, Jill went out of her way to go see that in the movie theater, and she doesn't do that these days. That's awesome. So she she absolutely was pumped to see that movie, and she really enjoyed what, it as well. What was it that made her? Was it because it was about an author, and she's into books? Yeah, it's about was books. There, she, yeah. she loved she loved the whole concept behind it. So yeah. she uh, Jill's a big book book nerd, as you remember yeah. from being on last week. Uh, big book nerd, and uh, yeah, she, that totally caught her eye. And she's like, she loves all the actors. Um, yeah. in it and everything like that. So she was a, a big, big fan of it. So yeah, hard, hardcore yeah. recommend Dougie. What do you got? So, uh, as I said last week, I've been on a hardcore a 24 film, uh, just marathon watch. I've watched. I love everything. that you've been doing this by the way. Oh dude, it has been such a change. It's very cool pace. And so, um, uh, yeah, uh, just, I was very interested in this one dream scenario starring Nicholas cage. Okay. Uh, just came out on max. Um, part of their A24 collection. What I love so much about A24 films is they often have really fascinating premises to tell a story that oftentimes I have to go and read. What can you explain this movie to make sure that I understand it? Cause I'm like, I don't know if I get it. It's usually a pretty simplistic story that's wrapped around a very unique premise. And sometimes it can, for me, it can, I can get lost in like, what, what was this movie about? Uh, but essentially sure. the, the point of this is, Nicholas Cage plays a very forgettable professor and he he's just an average guy happily mm -hmm. married has a family moderately successful but ultimately just like forgettable this phenomenon happens where he starts showing up in everyone's dreams like around the world they just dream of him and he's just in their dreams and it tells the story of this guy who's a nobody who becomes a somebody and he becomes popular and people are like oh my god it's paul and he doesn't know how to handle it and it's fascinating it's just a it's a really strange and unique premise and i love the idea of it and it's very interesting it tells a very very interesting story um and you didn't hear about you weren't you weren't here last week but i went on a streak with a24 films where i watched five in a row where the dog died and so the joke now is when i say i'm watching a24 film jill goes did the dog die and i was like you know i'll be in the middle of it i'm like i don't know i don't think there's a dog in this one but we'll find out we'll find out there was, there was one where i'm like oh this one for sure won't have a dog in it it takes place in space boy was i wrong boy <laughs> was i wrong uh, oh, those are so. Those are the hardest ones for me. I watch people die all day, but when a dog dies, because one there was a flashback where the dog died. I'm like, oh, like, okay, God, I didn't fucking, see that coming. Yeah, fucking assholes. But then there's another <laughs> ship that's just full of dogs, and a lot of them are dead. I'm like, oh, cool. All right, I was could have been more wrong with this film. This film was lousy with dogs. Like of all that's the ones, a, I didn't the, think it would be. This was the one. I'm like, for sure, this won't be in here. Oh, it was. That's so. that's the mark of a good film when they give you that that curveball and you're like oh i didn't see that coming it's like i didn't expect a spaceship dogs to full of dead ducks so i was like i'm like i get i go i'm five for five i'm killing it right now <laughs> i should say the dogs are getting killed so uh how many a24 films have you watched so far oh my god i i counted i think i i've maybe 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 somewhere between seven and ten at this point in time damn man that's so, look the way a24 films go 
uh, you're either going to walk away from this enlightened or you're going to have an existential breakdown. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them, they don't have happy endings. <laughs> exactly. Yep. But uh, they're very, very interesting. So I'll be when, recommending a lot of those in the weeks to come of all the ones that I've watched. <laughs> There's a couple when, that I will not be recommending because I'm like, nope, I'm good. Th- you and I need to have a conversation off mic about those because yes. I'm very curious which ones they are. When Dream Scenario and, came out. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, interrupt I was you. just going to say, same as you. I was. I have not yet seen it, but I was thrilled at the um, the concept because, again, it's one of those I have – I've never seen this played out before. Like this was truly a unique story. And I'm like, thank those are just so refreshing. When you get something, you're like, wow, this is pure unique. This is this is fantastic. Well, again, they tell a very simple story with a very like the concept of what they're trying to portray in this is told in an extremely unique way. Right. And what happens like, if you get famous like that? And yeah, you just, exactly. And you That's what it is. It's like, how do you do it? with yeah. fame? It's like, and it's not like they could tell the story, it was like, oh my God. His podcast blew up, mm-hmm. and what? It's like no, he's showing up in everyone's dreams. It's what like what the fuck is happening? Okay, right now? yeah. And so people know who he is. Like yeah, they're like, yeah. holy shit, you were in my dream. You know, well, and, and the fact that how just does, from the trailer, mm-hmm. some of them are pleasant, some of them are sexual, some of them are horrifying. Some like so people have different feelings about this guy. You know? Yeah, it's very. Very interesting. It tells a yeah. very interesting story. Um, but yeah, in general, uh, and there's there's something I want to talk to you about off mic. I, I mentioned last week with Jill, but there's there's a scene I want you to watch. Okay. That I think will be impactful. Not from this one, but from a different movie that I think I want to get your take on it. I would love to do it on this show. So Cool. Love it. Stay tuned. Love All it. All right. Well, gang, thanks for tuning in this week. We appreciate you, as always. Be sure to check out the link in the description for links to our Discord, to our Patreon, to our merch at Redbubble. Hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. What what creature would you want to bring back from the dead? Which one would you not want to? Um, all that good stuff. Let us know, uh, and we would sorely appreciate it. Uh, check out the video game streams on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central Time, and all of our social medias at Get Podcast, and check out Justin as well on Instagram at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And when you're in the online realm, uh, go ahead and check us out on any platform where you can find podcasts. You can find us. Like, uh, subscribe, share, rate, review, all those things. The big one is sharing, though. Please let people know that we exist. And then TuiStaith.com, TuiStaith on all social media, LoveAndImprovFilm.com, and Love and Improv Film on Instagram. Woo! All right, gang. Well, from the bottom of my heart, I'm going to say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you, and you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.